Hi, I'm Amy. Welcome to Our Conspiracy. Uh, greetings from Thailand. Uh, I went out today on a little outing in my Chiang Mai city and I discovered an art store, a little art store that I didn't even know existed. And of course I couldn't help myself. I bought some art supplies. So I'm gonna share this with you. I bought some new watercolor paints and some new paper, uh, neither of which I've used. So uh, let's check it out together, shall we? Let me switch here and I'll show ya. Okay, so um, here is my um, watercolor kit. It's got 12 colors. Gives me the name to the colors, which is always a good sign. And it's called Paul Rubens. And there's a Paul Rubens uh, in art history, but it's Peter Paul Rubens is what I know, how I know him. Uh, and, and let me show you what his work looks like just for fun. I happen to have something lined up for you. Check this out. Look, there you go. Paul Ru Rubens, but Peter Paul Rubens, Flemish, 1577 to 1640. And in looking up this image, I learned uh, something I didn't know that he died of complications of gout. What is gout? Anybody know? Anyway, rhetorical question. I digress. I mean, back to the art supplies. Okay, got my little tool here. I'm so excited. It's like Christmas, you know, when you get art supplies, seriously. And I think there's something especially cool about this. Ooh, fancy, look at this, got a cloth. Very, oh, check it out. <laughs> look at this, it's got like gold, sparkles on my video froze these, these sparkles are moving look at this <laughs> okay easily entertained but you know your typical art supplies don't come with this sort of bling so this is pretty pretty cool okay let's see what i got oh got a color sheet that's always good oh foreign language that's chinese um, but anyway, are the color sheets helpful? I only have 12 of these, but anyway, that's good. Okay, this is quite the fancy box. Let's look inside. Oh, look, there's a little sheet that tells me what the colors are. That is good. I'm gonna make a, a little cheat sheet um, like this out of my colors, but this is good for now. Hmm, there's no brush, which is totally fine. I never use whatever little tiny brush comes in here anyway. Uh, so that's fine. Okay, those are my paints, my new paints. We'll see. I'm pretty excited about the fancy gold. Okay, now, oh, okay, we got some paper. This is the, they had two kinds, a artist grade, professional grade, and a student grade. And this is the student grade. And it's hot press, I think. It just says HP, but I think that means hot press, which means it's smooth. It's 300 PSM, which is pretty good. And it's pure cotton. So let's see what we think. You know, every new paper that you try, honestly, it's just a brick. Open. It's a block. So, huh, this looks pink. I think this is just the protective paper. Okay. Pretty cool. Okay, it's nice and smooth, like I like it. So, oh my gosh. Okay, new paints, new paper. It's a banner day, as my mom used to say. So let me go back here. Um, so what am I gonna paint? That is the question. And I think it's very appropriate that I maybe paint something that I saw today while I was out on my adventure. So let me show you uh, some options that I'm gonna consider. Definitely not anything like this. <laughs> here's, another, here's another Peter Paul Rubens. Oh, he was known for his like very fleshy, curvy figures and just epic, huge, huge canvases. Anyway, uh, we won't be doing anything like this today. So anyway, here's 
Here's a typical little building that I saw today. So much fun. This is typical Chiang Mai. Like I want to draw everything I see. It's all like a little patchwork quilt of texture and line and pattern. Very cool. Anyway, this, this would be good. Um, I'm really attracted to sort of the geometric and then look here, it's got that round thing, path leading up. You know, I won't copy this photo, of course. Um, I would just use it for my purposes. Here's another one. This is the green dog. Um, I did not have anything from here, but apparently they have cannabis infused concoctions um, of the mild variety, I think. Anyway, that would be fun. Uh, here's <laughs> typically one of my bad photographs. I'm not a good photographer. I don't have any problem saying that because the truth is I, I use photographs for raw material for artwork. And so if the photograph's too pretty or too good, it's like, ah, you know, what am I gonna do to make it better? So I think working from a bad photograph is a good idea. And so in that spirit, I'm a pretty lousy photographer. Anyway, this thumb doesn't bother me since I would use this for raw material, but I kind of like this. I mean, it would need some, uh, you know, pumping up, so to speak, but it's still good fodder. This was kind of cool, beautiful. I love the perspective. And there's the, the person cooking with her back to us. This, this would be beautiful uh, to do as well. But I think this is gonna be my subject. And I wanna let you in on a little, see, not a secret, but a trick. Like in Asia, or where I live, not in Asia, but in, in any place that's really sunny, you, you get these very, very dark shadows. And sometimes it's, you know, they're dramatic and it's kind of cool, but it's hard to see what's going on in there. And you don't necessarily need to know, you can invent and make things up. But if you do want to see, you can play with the light levels in your editing. So I basically blew this out. And so all the lights are way, way too light, but look, look at all that information. Now I see the structure of the door. You know, I can't see everything, but I can see a whole lot more than I could hear. So my, my uh, watercolor that I'm gonna do will be sort of a combination of this and what information this can give me as well. So that's what I'm gonna do and let's get to it. Okay, I am gonna keep this really simple because my goal, uh, my task is to test out my paper and my paint. So I'm not gonna do something you know, too crazy. Um, okay, and I'm gonna go right in with ink because you know, sometimes if I'm worried about getting something on or, or a, co a complex thing, I'll, I'll do it in pencil and then I'll do it in ink. But uh, it's, a, it's a rickety old building. Like how badly can I mess it up? So if you're ever gonna be brave and just go in with ink, a rickety old building is the way to do it. Okay, the biggest thing, I'm gonna have a little extra ground. I like to have my object either low or high, so you have extra sky or extra ground, so it's not right bloop, in the middle. So I'm gonna have you going up to it. So I'm gonna make the widest part is all the way up here. So I'm throwing down the gauntlet, making my line interesting. Just a little bit of perspective. And now it's like I got, it's gonna fit. Okay, and then here, I got, yeah, I'm getting all the big elements just right off the bat. So it's funny, when I sometimes when I'm looking at, but I just keep my pencil moving, so I end up with all these little extra lines at intersections. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, again, this is my perspectives down here. More perspective, some sort of deck coming out here. Doesn't really matter. We got it, some plants over here. Wow, spiky, plantness, nondescript Thai plants. Sticking out in the stratosphere. Here we go. Are they in a pot? All right, I'll put it in the pot. Go and then maybe there's some grassiness here. This is all going to be just land, so not going to worry about that too much. So here's where my blown out picture 
kind of gives me some more information. I got like a kind of doorway here with some window nests. And then I think, I don't know, this might be the same thing. I'm just going to make it a big window. Just so it's different. And then back here, again, I plant this. Maybe there's some fenceness, nondescript stuff. It's just playful mark making to bracket the building. Truth be told, that's all it is. And uh, uh, do I want the flags? Sure, why not? Being very brave. Good, and then there's just one more little element here that's kind of cool. Tucked away, just a little raggedness. Okay, good enough, ready to paint. Oh, I gotta show you something funny that I just discovered. You know, I told you about the names of the colors. Well, they're all in Chinese. <laughs> there's numbers. And there's, 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 but there's no English. There's Chinese and numbers. So I'm going to have to just make an educated guess. Um, it's a good thing I'm educated. Okay, here's my paints. Very excited. Got a little mixing area. All right, I'm going to squirt them. Boy. Okay, and I definitely, because I, I can't even see what, you know, some of these darker colors, I think I know what they are, but I better do a little testing. Just, just sort of be on the safe side. If there is such a thing as the safe side in art, I think not. Okay, so I got like a lemon yellow, looks like a cat yellow, an orange, some kind of a nice red. This looks, I'm guessing this is a dark blue. Oh, it's purple. Okay, good thing I checked. Purple, this is a dark blue. This, this I can't tell, let's see. Oh, that's, a, that's like an ultramarine blue. That's more of a cobalt blue. Uh, and then I got a green, it's like a sort of a forest green. Oh, viridian, or hooker green, I think. Yellow ochre, burnt sienna, raw umber. And I bet this is black, yep. It was easy. <coughs> All right, now that I got that figured out. Let's see what I'm going to do. All right, I'm going to try to mix a nice neutral. So I'm going to mix, uh, let's see, I'm going to mix, uh, take my ultramarine. Pretty exciting so far, so good. They're kind of juicy with a burnt sienna. Look at that, see? And then you, you get sort of a gray when you mix a warm and a cool like that. A blue and a brown. It's still a little bit more on the blue side. I'm just tweaking, tweaking, tweaking. See what I can do. Oh yeah. Okay, so that's gonna be all my interior. And I'm just, I'm gonna go around my flags, which is about the only thing that I need to go around. Then once I'm in the clear, oh yeah, once I'm in the clear, then I can like have more abandon with how I use the paint. I'm gonna kind of indicate that texture of that doorway there. It's gonna dry a little bit lighter. So, and this window too, I'm gonna to leave a little light in there. Okay, I'm gonna let that set. 
I uh, could get a little darker. This, this reminds me so much of like a compact like a beauty supply kind of thing. I'm going to just add a little bit of more depth. Windows are typically dark with reflection. Reflection of the way life used to be. Sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm, in, I'm happy. I'm in a good mood because I have new art supplies and that always makes me happy. Okay, this, oh, this is interesting the way this keeps doing that. That's kind of annoying. How can I, here. Okay, let's do a little bit of yellow over back here. Good. And a little bit of a little tiny bit of this is almost white, but in shadow. So I'm using just super watery. So far, I'm I'm really liking this paper. This is pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna do let's do some green. Again, I want to cut it down a little bit. So I already have like a neutral mix. Add a little red, believe it or not. Add red to the green and we are good to go. Okay, here's some plantness back here. I have a little, don't want to dip my dirty brush in my yellow. I cleaned it first. Okay. There we go. So my plants in the foreground. I want it to be a brighter green. More ochre here. Ooh, these I, I'm liking these colors. They're pretty, pretty nice, really. Let's see if they how they blend and mix. Get a bigger brush. Oh yeah, getting out the big guns here. Now this is the wrong color again, but I don't want to corrupt my yellow. So I'm going to mix it, take it out of there with a clean brush, put it in my mixing tray. And get the big brush. Okay, I'm gonna pause the video a second and I'll be back and you're not gonna believe the magic. Okay, so here's what I got so far. As the late great Herman Keys, my mentor would say, not entirely unsuccessful. Uh, the colors seem a little dry and matte looking. Um, there's a lot of blooms that are going on. And this was just a first layer, so that doesn't typically happen on better paper. Um, but you know, you can work with it. Like I, I find new paper usually you gotta you gotta do a couple rounds and then you figure out you know what it can do, what it can't do. Um, I can definitely make this um, way more vivid with marker and co pencil and ink and you know do my my tricks with it. But since this is a test of these paints. And this paper, I'm going to try to just 
do one more layer on this is dry now and just see if I can kind of make things a little bit more vivid or just, I don't know, punch it up a little bit. So I'm mixing just uh, a really bright blue. So I think it's like a Prussian blue or a cobalt blue, probably a cobalt blue. I'll never know unless I learn Chinese. And I'm just gonna see what a second layer might accomplish. Certainly making that flag stand out. Ready with that. Um, okay, and I'm a big blotter. So again, second layer. Let's see what's happening. I, I did find I could lift. You know, you re-wet and lift, which is kind of interesting. Um, all right, I'm going to add some more of a darker green underneath here. This is kind of a platform. Uh, let's see how that ends up drying. And I, uh, I'm not going to be able to do too much in here without my mixed media, but I just wanted to see how this uh, was working. So let me do one more quick trick and then I'll let you go. Just adding hits of definition, and then I'm going to uh, color color these white lines. So I'll show you what that looks like. I can add some more to this plant. Just pop out a little bit. This is white out. This is my secret weapon. But again, this is uh, not testing the paint and the paper because I already know how this works, but. You're going to need. Okay. Okay, so now that this has dried, I'm going to color these lines. This white out will take color beautifully. And I chose to make this top a little orangey so it's a complement of the blue sky. Okay. Color this one. So it's lighter, but it's not so light. And here's a little light blue, top of that flag. Orange, red, I, I might just look at that, that whole thing redder. And the, a little more color in the window. And then look at this. Wow. 
Greenness. Mantness. Jazzing up the front. And let's make this pot orange. Forgot about that. And then last but not least, uh, I'm gonna make everything above sort of the shadow line a darker gray so that it stays in the shadow. A little bit lower. Good. Um, yeah, uh, okay. Looks good to me. Pretty good experiment. So the jury's still out. Uh, on both of these things, but I'm going to keep working on it, keep working with it. And you know, it's amazing. Sometimes even sort of subpar art materials, uh, you can learn to really work with them, but you have to, you have to find out what their limitations are and work within that. And anyway, money spent on art supplies is always money well spent, <laughs> if you ask me. So, okay, that's it for now. Um, I'm teaching a class on uh, drawing and painting coming up. I'll leave the link in the comments below. Oh, look at this. Oh, dear. No problem. Um, I will see you again. Okay. <laughs> Bye from our conspiracy. Stay, stay safe out there. Bye.